Hello, and welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Rachel, and I have some really fun books for everyone today. So let's get started. The first book I have is called The Cool Bean. And this book is written by Jory John and Pete Oswald and published by HarperCollins Publishers. Here we go. The Cool Bean. Watch out! Here comes the cool beans. The cool beans. Oh yeah, check out how they move. Look at the way they swagger. Notice their sunglasses. Yow! The cool beans are known all over school, from house to house, across town, beyond county lines. In the olden days, last year, we were all one big pot of beans. We were a mixed bag, but somehow it worked. Yep, those were the good old days. And then we stopped seeing each other as much. That's just how it is sometimes. You spend less time together, even though you're not totally sure why. I watched as the beans I knew so well. The beans from my own pod became the cool beans. Oh, they were so cool. One of them could play the guitar. Cool. One of them could draw the best superheroes. Cool. One of them could jump higher than any bean I'd ever known. <gasps> So cool. Me? Well, I mostly stayed the same. Sure, I made some small changes. I wore sunglasses. They're a little too big. I slicked my hair back. A little too slick. I strutted around. Ow! He stubbed his toe. And he swaggered. <gasps> Oof! but he slipped on a banana. I was still picked last for everything. My clothes never seemed to fit. I snorted when I laughed. I walked into stuff. I was an uncool bean, for sure. I started thinking of myself as just a common bean with no special skills. I couldn't compete, so I didn't even try. I'd never be a cool bean. It seems like there were two types of beans in the world. There were the cool beans and the beans like me. The days all blended together. I lived my life and things were just okay. I took tests and ate lunches and mostly kept to myself. The cool beans continued being cool. I mean, sure, I miss them a bit, but it's not like I was going to say anything. I felt like all that coolness had gotten in the way of our friendship. And that's how it went until one day. I was in the cafeteria I dropped my lunch off my loafers. Oh, I dropped my lunch on my loafers. Oh no, not again. But then something sort of miraculous happened. Out of nowhere, one of the cool beans helped me clean it up. He didn't even say anything. He just gave me a nod. That was it. Later, I was out on the playground. I tripped and scraped my knee and maybe cried a little bit and everyone saw. Another one of the cool beans came to my side, and without a word, he dusted me off. That afternoon, I was sitting in class. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't notice, but our teacher had called on me. Everybody star stared. I sat there in silence. Nobody said anything. And then, 
Then everybody just laughed at me. That was it. After today, I was officially, officially a has-been. But then one of the coolest beans stood up and came over to me. Everybody watched. She leaned in close and whispered, Hey, the teacher asked you to read from page 32. Then she gave me a quick wink and went back to her seat. It was a small gesture, sure, but it was also everything. I walked home with a goofy smile on my face. I smiled all the way through dinner. That day made all the difference. It was a day that could have been really bad, if not for the kindness of a few cool beans. It gave me a shred of confidence. That shred of confidence has continued to grow. Somebody had my back, or a few somebodies. After that, I started hanging out with the cool beans again. Not all the time, but sometimes, at lunch, after school, even on the weekends. Throughout all of this, I realized that it's not about how you look or any of that other silly stuff. It's about a wink or a nod or a smile at just the right moment. It's about dusting somebody off, helping them up again, and pointing them in the right direction. You need a hand? Now that's cool. The end. That was a really fun story about helping people out. Now, I think it's time for a song. Does everyone know the Itsy Bitsy Spider? Let's get our spiders out. The Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. <gasps> now the teeny weeny spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the teeny weeny spider climbed up the spout again. Good job, friends. Now, it's time for another story. This one is called Harriet Gets Carried Away. And this is by Jessie Sima and published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Harriet loves costumes. She didn't save them for Halloween or only wear them to dress up birthday parties. Harriet wore costumes all the time. On the morning of her own dress up bar birthday party, Harriet was a busy bee, busy, 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 busy. We still need to pick up some snacks from the grocery store, her dad said, and lots of party hats, Harriet added. Her dad shared a look. Okay, they said, but don't get carried away. Harriet was sure she could manage that. She changed into her extra special errand running costume, straightened her bow tie, waddled down the street, and through the subway. And into the store. Her dad's seemed to have the deli counter covered. So Harriet set on on a quest for the perfect party hats. But instead, she found something else. A bunch of penguins getting ice. Harriet forgot all about the party hats. She waddled past the checkout lines through the city. And out of town. Where are we going? Harriet asked excitedly. Back home, of course, Penguin answered. 
The city is a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. As the balloons floated farther from the city, Harriet's thoughts floated back to her birthday party. Excuse me, said Harriet. I don't think I belong here. That's okay, the penguin replied. Everyone feels like they don't fit in sometimes. Maybe you should lose the bow tie. But Harriet didn't care about fitting in. She cared about getting back to the store. So she straightened her bow tie. And hatched a plan. And another. Things were not going smoothly. <gasps> Harriet was almost out of ideas. Hey, said the orca, you're not a penguin. How did you know, cried Harriet. Penguins don't wear bow ties, he replied. Harriet realized this orca might just be her ticket home. So she told him her tale of costumes and penguins and hot air balloons. She told him all about her family and her city and the party hats she needed to find. And when her story was finished, she said, I could really use a lift. It just so happens I'm heading up north for a family reunion, replied the orca. I could drop you off along the way in exchange for a fancy red bow tie. This seems like a fair trade. As the orca swam, Harriet daydreamed. Once Harriet could make out the city in the distance, the orca came to a halt. This is as far as I can go, he said. So Harriet called in a favor from some friend she knew from the park. We'll take it from here, they said. It looks like the pigeon showed up to help. And the pigeons flew Harriet into the city. Harriet soared back into the store and headed straight for the party hats. It didn't take long to pick out the perfect ones. She found her dad's at the deli, just where she had left them. Where did you sneak off to, they asked. I just went to get the party hats, said Harriet. Oh, and I could use a new bow tie. With hats in hand, Harriet waddled back through the subway, up the street, and into her room. She put on her birthday party costume, straightened her party hat, and headed to the roof. The party was a great success, and no one got carried away. Looks like Harriet is a lion now, except Maybe Olivia. <gasps> Olivia showed up as a wolf with a bunch of wolf friends. How fun. The end. Good listening, everyone. How about another song now? Does everyone know If You're Happy and You Know It? Okay, here we go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, tap your head. If you're happy and you know it, tap your head. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, tap your head. Good job, everyone. Now I think it's time for our last story. This story is called Outside In by Deborah Underwood. Let's see. And it's published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Once we were part of outside and outside was part of us. There was nothing between us. Now, sometimes, 
even when we're outside. We're inside. Looks like she's riding in a car. We forgot. Outside is there. So outside reminds us. With flashes at the window and slow magic tricks. It sends the sunset and shadows inside to play. Outside sings to us with chirps and rustles and tap taps on the roof. It beckons with smells, sun baked, fresh, and mysterious. Outside feeds us. Sun, rain, and seeds become warm bread and berries. Outside cuddles us in clothes. Once puffs of cotton, it holds us in wooden chairs. Once trees. We feel outside in the warm weight of our cats and the rough fur of our dogs. Outside shows us there is a time to rest and a time to start fresh. Outside steals inside a spider sneaking shelter a box elder bug in the bath, a tiny snail on kale. Even rivers come inside, cool water rushing, eager to return to the sea. I'm here, outside says, and I miss you. outside waits. And we answer. The end. Thank you everyone so much for joining me for story time today. I hope you enjoyed. We have new story times every Wednesday, so be sure to come back next week and take a listen to a new story time. Also, every other Thursday, we have our Kodo Youth Radio Show at 6.30. Our next one is going to be January 28th, so please be sure to tune in and take a listen. And we have activity kits coming out January 22nd, and we have a special youth story time kit for toddlers and babies coming out January 27th. So please swing by the library and feel free to pick one up. Thank you again for joining me. Bye!